that time of day. Got a breath of wind here, it's bloody fantastic. So nice here. Janetta got bitten by a spider. It's been last night or just before she went to bed, she started feeling sick and dizzy. I didn't capture it the GoPro unfortunately, but Hurley's broken his ankle. How's your ankle, buddy? Still broken? Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna go this way. Yeah? We're gonna be okay. Yeah. We're very excited. We're just about to begin our drive in here. We have just arrived at this sign here, which is the entry point to the Ninkaloo Coast. Right, yeah, unfortunately, in a situation where we're bogged and bogged and bogged and getting nowhere. Crossing Yardy Creek before is sandy and boggy as and literally got stuck. Righty, so we've arrived at Turquoise Bay. This is Yardy Homestead. Diesel here from Getting Around Isles Camper Trailer Travelling. Thanks for joining us today. We're back with the trip videos in this one. Apologies it took so long. It wasn't planned to uh, be this sort of gap between the trip finishing up and you know the trip sort of starting up again. You had a quick look at the uh, the trip there before and hope that's got you caught up. But um, with this one here, we're in Exmouth and uh, I guess it's a little bit of a challenge of um, what it's like in Exmouth. And sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. And this one here will finish up with a little bit of an incident of mine. And, Anyway, that's enough from me. Here's a quick look at what's coming up and hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Rightio, here we are in Exmouth now. We this place is incredible. It is absolutely bloody stunning. I just did something I don't recommend anyone ever to do while using a drone here. Basically what we're doing is we're looking for the drone here at the moment. I lost it in a big massive canyon and... Rightio, here we are in Exmouth now. We just put in here to get some supplies. Supply, sorry, it's just after 10 o'clock now. 11 o'clock is check-in time and... Just gonna drop in here by memory. There's an IGA, and we're gonna grab some groceries and a few bits and pieces. So we're here for the next three nights. Um, there's a few things we have to do here. Lexmouth has the main drag that goes straight through town with the caravan parks there. And this area here, there's an IGA and news agencies, and uh, there's a bakery and a, a bottle shop and a few other things here. It's sort of the main hub of where everything is. Something else that's here. If you've got kids, or for the big kids, there's a water park literally across the road there where the kids can run through the little water fountains and those types of things, which is a great time. So I'll try and get a quick shot of it here for you as well. But if you're here in a hot day, you gotta bloody check this out. Also, there's a little area here, there's a chemist and uh, souvenir shops and you can buy some clothes and those types of things. There is a camping and fishing store here as well. Last time I came through here, bought some fish and tackle and got some tips and what to use up here. So by memory, this guy here was really good. And, now clearly they're not gonna tell you spots, they're gonna, they're gonna tell you what gear to use and what's around those types of things. 
So yeah, this is the spot where you definitely come to, to get all your bits and pieces. Right, yeah, so supplies have been sorted and we're about to head off to our caravan park now, but Anita just wanted to add, uh, a lot of the groceries there are actually cheaper than we get in Perth, is that right? Yeah, some of them were like the same price or yeah, some of the specials were cheaper than what we get in Perth, so yeah, good time to stock up. And we probably would have expected, what is it, 1400 Ks north of Perth, everything would be a bit more expensive yeah. up here, but not the and case. That's, sorry, that's Perth um, Coles and Woolworths prices, not IGA prices, and that's an IGA. Yep. So I was very impressed by the pricing. And there's actually two IGAs in there, and um, clothing shops and your, um, uh, what is there, a place you, you check in to do your tours and those types of things. So you'll be able shop. to get you'll be able to get everything you need here. Plus there is a, a brewery there that looks like there was a few punters waiting for it to open. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure it's soon enough. Anyway, you can also wet your whistle there, but we're going to check in the caravan park now. Righty, yo, we're all set up and camped there now. And time for us to well it's time for me to wet my whistle so uh I need to do some work in the moment and it's a good chance for us to grab lunch and support the local with uh a couple of colders which i can tell you is well earned and uh this one's called the pot shot hotel never been here before but we'll see how it goes It's a, it's a stinking hot bloody day here, I'm going to be honest with you. What we're done today is we had lunch during the pot shot. Uh, recommend it. There's actually a pool there uh, and there's a bar all set up around there and a sort of hanging area as well. And it's a decent sized pool there so definitely recommend checking that out and taking the kids there. After that we went and, and had a look at the Whalebone Brewery which was pretty cool. Tonight I'm going to be a treat for you. I'm going to cook up my favourite for dinner. This is um, it's a rack of pork basically, but what I do is, and I'm gonna I'll show you my secret ingredient here. Any soy sauce works, any, you know, it doesn't matter which one. There you go, that's sort of that out. This um, rack of pork here, I get from Aldi. Um, only reason being, I like the, the packing or the wrapping that, that it comes in. So what I can do is I can actually tip the soy sauce in here don't be stingy. It's about half a bottle, a little bit more than I would normally do. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to soak this. So what I would normally do is, ideal situations are, I'll give it 15 minutes each side, just let it soak in there like that. Should be on the camera there. Just let him soak there. We're going to get this one on. I've got the Weber Q um, starting to heat up now, so by the time that's ready to go in about half an hour, um, on minimum temperature, about 180, is deluxe. Alrighty, good evening. It's uh, late, a bit later on now. It's it's around 5.30, maybe closer to 6, and the sun's going down. It's cooled down, thankfully, because it's pretty bloody warm, and it's kind of taken its toll on us a bit. We know we come from a, a Perth winter. We're not kind of used to this, but the cook-up's coming along well. That's come along nicely. Now what I do is, our foil, I punch some holes into it. About 180, 190. And I give it at about a half, about half an hour each side and maybe about 10 or 15 minutes more and that's about enough. I'm just gonna turn him off here now. The kids have bolted. Radio, right, so we're ready to dish up dinner here now. And here we go, so. It was about 30 minutes either side was enough and this one here all we do is just cut these like this then for a little side is uh this one here which is chicken caesar salad pass bowl which we picked up from the iga this morning and then to go with the ribs a bit of aioli 
just dip it in, dip it in and top it off and wrap your laughing gear around these, sack. There you go, mate. Look at that. Ooh. The kids uh, had a lot of fun here and had a big game of cricket going and that's tucking them out and we're going to get um, a feed in some now and get a shut up and that'll be it for the morning. But in the morning what I'll do is I'll show you around the camp here and, and give them a bit of a look around the place and um, that'll be it for us here for night and um, we'll catch them on. Okay, so good morning. It's oh, it's pretty windy here this morning. It's, it was um, super calm last night. It was absolutely beautiful. So we had a, a nice uh, little evening to ourselves and we all, um, got a, a very nice sleep last night because we're all pretty gassed after well basically pack up and pack down two two days in a row unfortunately because uh, this one's poor planning but we're going to go out and explore today before it starts getting too warm and just give you a quick look around the little site here so in case I didn't mention it was 249 bucks for three nights here so it's about 80 bucks a night uh, and I think it was nine bucks a admin fees or whatever they call it this is a power site um, there is water runoffs and those types of things if you're in a van and it's a pretty decent sign uh, pretty decent site sorry the ground is absolutely rock hard here there is a lot of grass sites and there is a lot of dirt and those types of things so like any sort of camping I'm sort of learning is just make sure you got pegs and different setups for different kinds of weather because you don't know where you're gonna come across and here is like bloody drilling into stone um, took a bit going in there with the drill and uh, if I was going to try and hammer it in I just wouldn't get him in to be honest with her. So I've got the wall in at the moment because it is super windy. Kids are just playing secrete out the front here. Again with the clothesline. Drilling pegs there in the bottom there to make sure it's not going anywhere. In, the uh, in here we've got also got the wall up here to stop the wind coming through. A little windshield to stop the flame going out and and it probably won't be, want me showing this, but setup is pretty simple in here. It's just all beds all the way through. We've got our little fans there, They're keeping us cool at night time. So, got the windows open there to make sure we're getting breezy in the right way and at the right time of day. But anyway, hey Hurley, we're gonna go out and explore. Yeah. And where are you going? Hey. Alright, come back because I'm about to go out, okay? If you're ever in doubt about bringing bikes to a caravan park for the kids, don't hesitate. Kid here has bikes. I haven't seen many scooters, which is strange because last time we were out traveling, scooters seemed to be taken over and kids were zooming around in scooters everywhere. But I like it's a bit old fashioned, it's all bikes everywhere. And um, in the afternoons especially once you know the weather cools down and all the kids are back in from exploring for the day it's just kids riding around everywhere and you know and the kid that doesn't have the bike is probably the one that's going to be going to get left out and and uh don't forget your cricket bat and your tennis balls because it only takes one kid to to start a whole game of cricket and suddenly there's 20 kids playing and there's footers everywhere and um it's great fun for all but anyway i'll um round the kids here and we're going to hit the road and we're going to show you something Enjoyed that. Um, I enjoyed filming as much as I'm enjoying driving in here. It's so nice. This place is incredible. It is absolutely bloody stunning. The the ride in the drive in here was amazing. So there is a big hike here, but we're just going to do this little walk up the top of the hill here and uh, have a bit of a look. Might be a toilet over there, but it doesn't really look like a toilet if you know what I mean. Just going to wake our way up these stairs here now and. It isn't too difficult. Now there is a big sign at the start of this saying two wheel, uh, sorry, four wheel drive access only. But I'm confident many have come in here with two, two wheel drives. And if they did it, they would have done it without a problem. 
that's for sure the roads are pretty good but the views are amazing well this place is incredible absolutely incredible it's well i can't think of words that really describe it it's, it's um something else if you get a chance and you're up this way make sure you come out here this is absolutely worth it the kids got to have a bit of a run around and stretch their legs and um you know you can sort of see there's a lot of trails going up around the hills and the mountains here so yeah if you're a hiker and you, you like to explore this is definitely a place to come and i recommend doing it early in the day before it gets too hot it's just starting to um, kick up a bit here now i think that'll about do us here for the moment i'll um the kids have had enough i'm gonna head down the hill there and jump in the car and i might just capture some of this mountain range on the drive out for you as well hope you enjoyed it Radio. So here we are at the Charles Knife Canyon. Apologies if it's, if it's windy. Trying to watch my step, and uh, I tell you what, if you come, if you were to come here for a sunrise, I don't reckon you get too many better spots. To be honest with you, this little area here is there's plenty of room for a few cars, and you can drive right up to the end of the track. There is basically there's nothing there it's just a little oil well and now directly the other side of this range here is where turquoise bay is to give you an idea how far south so it's about a half an hour's drive south maybe 10 or 15 minutes south of uh was it shot hole canyon and i don't know man they're both very different they're both absolutely bloody amazing so if you get the chance and want to have a look at both i absolutely recommend it it's so nice just imagine watching the sun come up over there bloody beautiful people have had little fires up here as well and i'll tell you what if you my tip is i'd come to this one for a sunrise and i'd go to the other one for a sunset the other one i think i don't know felt like it was a bit higher so i reckon you get up one of the top of the uh the canyons there and you actually would you know have a nice view whereas this one here i think it's you'd have to go for a fair walk up the end there to enjoy it i'm not too sure if you've done it let us know either way if you're in exmouth come and see these out but i'll check the drone up here now and and give you a look because uh this is pretty bloody nice something i don't recommend anyone ever to do while using a drone is basically between the last place and the drive up here i flattened both the drone batteries I'll, I'll give one of them a charge up basically so it's been on there for charge for about 10 minutes and so i took off for the drone battery at about 30 percent and i would always recommend to land your drone at 30%, not take it off, but basically what we're doing is we're looking for the drone here at the moment. It started saying critical or low battery. I was about, I think it was about 980 meters across the other side of the canyons there. 
No, it's not that one. Yeah, we know. Right, so. Oh, here it is, here it is. Yeah. There's the drone right there. So, what happened was, and. Uh, yeah, it's that's how it's recording, so you'll see me driving. <laughs> you'll see me driving up now. Now, the first thing was, like, what a drone will do when it gets flat is it will land itself. It will force land so it doesn't actually crash. Want to grab it out? Yeah, okay. Thanks, mate. I'll just turn that off. The first concern was I've got to get it across. I just have to get it across that canyon because there's no way I'm going to be able to walk across that canyon to the other side to get it. Another thing that went against me was it was actually quite windy. And uh, when it's windy, it means these props are working a lot harder than they would normally do. I basically just went directly for the closest, um, uh, like bit on the other side. Yeah, so where we were, basically, you could see the other cat, the other canyon there it was just to get to this one and then just direct directly to, to land. Once I got to land, I'll get to road, and if it's close to the road, you know, then I'll be able to walk off and try and find it, and that's what I did. And, Oh, I was shaking. I was actually, I was actually really nervous flying there because this is the one that I got from DJI, and I didn't want to have the conversation to say, "Hey, I lost it in a big, massive canyon," and I lost it because I took off when the drone was, you know, down to thirty percent. Oh, I was a bit nervous, mate. I do that. Like Even just driving up to get the drone now, my heart, heart was still going, like hoping it was still going to be here, and because it all looks the same up here, I wasn't really sure because. It gone flat and it's a big area out here so hope that was worth it anyway we're going to drive home now for lunch it's uh 12 30 here we'll grab some lunch and then home oh, yeah home back to camp smarty pants we're going to grab some lunch and then after that well when we're there we're going to have a bit of a chat because i've got something i want to i want to take the boys to to go and see but What do you do when it's four degrees and it's a bit late for lunch, the kids are a bit cranky. Oh mate. So we got some chips, we got some nuggets, we got uh, some squid. So we'll get us all sorted out here. Alright. Alright, so nuggets for me. Nuggets for me. Alright, so we've got some squid. It's us here for the moment, we're going to sit down and have some lunch here and Plot our next move. Rightio, so after lunch we, what do we do? So we went down and uh, had a beer at the Froth Brewery, which is delicious. They have a, a, a range of fantastic beers there, um, yep. if that's your thing, didn't they? Yeah, it's Great. true. <laughs> uh, well, Apple and Hurley had a, what do you have, an orange juice and an apple juice? And yeah. After that, myself and Zach and Hurley went down to the Learmonth Jetty to, to have a flick and Unfortunately, the tide was right out, so um, that was just the wrong time for us. Uh, had a share, we're going to check out the, the markets here. So it's a Friday night, night before grand final, and um, we'll check out the you know, the kids love the markets and have a bit of a look around. And you yeah. reckon you might find something? Yeah, I bet the Lions are going to win the final tomorrow. Maybe. Be because last time they won, last time they played Collingwood, they won. By probably about it was seven or six. Yeah, okay. About no right. seven or eight. Alright, there you go. That's alright, so Hurley's tips Brisbane. And uh yeah, once we have a bit of a look in here and we'll see if the, the kids can find something, we'll probably grab some dinner here tonight and and uh yeah we might drop in and, and um support some of the local as well um and have a cold one or two.
um, just a bit of a heads up and I guess to close off this, this video today we didn't do much after grand final last night and we got an early start today because we've got a seven hour drive to our next location and unfortunately the weather has been bloody average this whole time and we haven't been able to do much and it's blowing its bum off right now unfortunately and it's kind of just how it's been you know sometimes you have crack and weather and it all comes together for you but sometimes it just bloody does and this is one of those but we still had a good time the um the weather's just caught calming down and improving like literally tomorrow but hey we're on to our next location and we're very excited about that one just a quick one as well if you're interested in seeing a, a lot of our content ahead of time consider jumping on our patreon page and um, there is a seven day free trial there you can try it if you want if you don't no worries at all and thanks for watching the video thanks for supporting us and um, allowing us to do some of these things we're really thankful for that and if you can drop something in the comments and let us know what you thought if you had any questions and thoughts and i'll wrap him up here now i hope this I hope the audio is coming through it's getting a bit bloody windy but it is what it is i'm diz for getting around oz camp trailer traveling we'll see you in the next one Hooroo.